Evangelist Bonke, it's so good to have you on Turning Point. Thank you so much. Now, I remember the very first time I heard of your ministry. My parents called me in. They were like, you have to see this video. It was, uh, you were at a crusade in Nigeria, and this man had been raised from the dead. Yes. And they called me in to watch it, and I'm like, wow, that God would move so powerfully in your ministry. What is it about your ministry that causes God to do incredible miracles? Well, I think uh, this has something to do with the nature of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of God is inherent in the gospel. And people who preach the gospel with faith is, see the same what the apostles saw. Uh, and it is the manifestation of, of the power of God. Now, how did you feel the first time, you know, you saw God move like that, raise someone from the dead? I was overwhelmed because you don't see that every day. Uh, this, this is something very special. I kept saying afterwards that it somehow had the dimension of the raising from the dead of Lazarus in scripture. This man had died in a car accident. His name was Daniel Ekechukwu. And his wife had the faith to bring him in an ambulance after three days in the mortuary into my meeting. And I just was dedicating a church in Onicha, Grace Chapel. And then they, they took the corpse out of the coffin, put it in the basement. And while I was praying and preaching there, suddenly, Life. there he was. Wow. Life. He fully recovered. And uh, I just have written a book to recount the whole story called He's Breathing. It will be out soon. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about books, you've written a book here called Taking Action. Yes. And there's so much in this book that we could talk about, but I want to focus on healing because um, that's a, a huge topic in the church. So why is it that some people get healed and others don't? I'd say it has something to do with faith. It could be, I always used to think the sick had to have that faith. And then according to your faith, the, the, the sick person's faith, it shall be unto you. But I have learned in my life that God has many different avenues. This is what it is. It can be your faith. It can be my faith. It can be the faith of a congregation. And sometimes Jesus heals if there is no faith because God is God. God is God. Now for someone watching who maybe they're going through a sickness or they know someone who's sick and they've been praying and they have faith, um, but yet they've seen, you know, no results. I want to ask, um, you know, the hard questions for the people who don't, maybe they believe for healing and then they died or, you know, something didn't happen. What would you tell them about who God is, even if they don't get healed? John the Baptist was very disappointed when, when he, Jesus didn't seem to fit his prophecy. And he sent out from prison his disciples to inquire whether he was the Jesus he had prophesied about. What had he prophesied? He said, he who comes after me, he is greater than I because he is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit and fire. So they came back and reported, John, Jesus, we talked to him and he said, Tell him the blind see, the cripples walk, the dead are raised. He must be the Messiah. I think John must have said, but did he baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire? That was the prophecy. So what did Jesus say in the end? To just answer the question of John the Baptist, the doubter, he said to him, blessed is he who is not offended in me. When everything is said and done, Jesus turns to all of us and says, blessed are you that is not offended in me. And since that day when I understood that, I decided 
to rejoice with those who are healed and to keep on praying with those who are not yet healed. But Jesus never fails. For somebody who's watching, who's like looking, who's heard about your ministry about, you know, the power of God and how he raises people from the dead and he heals the sick and they want that for themselves. Maybe they're sitting and they're watching and thinking, I want that. What would you tell them? Well, Jesus said, fear not, only believe. Um, you know, the word belief there is, is phobio in the Greek. Uh, fear not, only believe. So the, 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 the antidote to fear is not courage. Come on, pick up your socks. You know, be cheerful. It'll all turn out well. That's all nonsense. He said, fear not, only believe. Faith is the antidote to fear. And faith wipes fear out. Fear is the dark room in which people develop their negatives. But if our faith cancels all phobia, all doubts, all fears, Lord, I believe.